Hi, I'm making a video about how to use Mold Builder, a liquid latex rubber. So this product here. Um, I used some Sculpey clay. The Sculpey clay was a little bit old, so I had to uh, rehydrate it with some olive oil. So after doing that, it was pretty pliable. I squished it up, and I made a uh, small tiki sculpture. So I used this tiki sculpture to make my mold. Um, after sculpting this, I put it in the toaster oven for about 15-20 minutes at uh, 275 degrees. It started to burn a little bit, so I turned the heat down and it came out fine. Uh, it was a little bit pliable when it came out, still is, um, but during the cooling process it began to harden. Um, before I painted this, I started to brush this product on, this mold builder. So it takes many layers of this to be brushed on. Um, to end up with this. This is my mold. So uh, this is maybe about 15 layers and halfway through I use this gauze. Um, so I cut these gauze squares up and uh, place those against here with a little bit of mold builder to just kind of help firm this up. So I'm going to show you a little part of the process and uh, that's just brushing on another layer of mold builder onto these Sculpey tiles. Um, so these have about four layers on them right now. It's been about three hours since I put a layer on, so I'm going to brush on another layer of this mold builder. It's uh, pretty simple. Just basically brush it on. You want to use a soft brush. So after using this, you really want to clean your brush off because this mold builder really dries in there into your brush really well um, and this brush is, is not very soft uh, so I'm painting a little bit of a lip I'm brushing on a little bit of a lip outside of this tile here and that's gonna end up being this part so this is to just kind of uh, help keep your resin from pouring out so it makes for a nice base. It also gives you some uh, part to peel the mold out or peel the cast out once you're done. So this brush is on pretty thin. You want to make sure you get into all those cracks. Um, it does take a long time to make these molds. It took that one. It took me a couple days to make that a uh, tiki one and um, that's because I waited in between brushing these layers on pretty pretty long so you want to do it every two to three hours add another layer it recommends that you don't wait more than 24 hours if you wait more than 24 hours I don't think you're gonna get a very good adhesion to the bottom layer and your, your molds probably gonna separate um, so try and do this every couple hours I notice it dries a little faster on a hot day. So um, here in Hawaii, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, 300 plus days of sun, so it's pretty miserable at an unbearable 75 degree temperature. Um, so here, these things do dry pretty fast. I also like to keep a paper towel around because this stuff dries inside my brush a lot, and you want to wipe it off because it really starts to get your brush too hard. Um, also this liquid latex smells like cat piss. So it's got some kind of ammonia in it and I would, I would wear a respirator and gloves even um, just for safety. Right, so this is pretty basic. Like I said, this, I think this is the fourth or fifth layer I've added to this. So the next layer I, I do, I'm gonna work in some of that gauze just to firm up the mold um, and then later I'll show you how I take this off. I'm using a piece of glass a non-pore surface so you could probably use wax paper, plexiglass, anything that's just not porous um, so it doesn't stick. Uh, this glass seemed to work out pretty well and one of the things I had to do with this these tiles to keep them from moving while I'm brushing them 
is I place little bits of kneaded eraser underneath these tiles. That way it keeps them from sliding around when I'm brushing these on. Um, this seems to work out pretty well. You could probably use double stick tape or uh, that UTAC stuff. Um, anything to keep this thing from sliding around while you're brushing this mold on. So basically this is just how you add a layer. It's pretty simple. Um, this stuff is kind of chunky. Especially this first few layers you put on, you're going to notice that it has a little bit of chunky stuff in it. And I thought that was going to be a problem at first, but it hasn't been. It's um just kind of adds to the mold, helps build the layer up a little bit. So that's just basically one step. I'll show you what the back looks like. So this is the kneaded eraser that I stuck on here, just to keep this thing from sliding around. So... um after about 15 layers of this, some gauze, you should end up with something like this. Um, and at this point, once this dries, I uh, began casting and I got these pieces here. So these are my white casting resin tiles. I made several of these out of this mold. I think I got about six of them out of this mold here. Um, so, you know, they're all identical. They look pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so I got about six molds out of this and eventually what happened is these undercuts here on this, these really deep parts that I cut here, uh, began to stick, stick to the mold. So when I take these molds off, I really have to work them all the way around. Um, and these really small cuts here, these, these parts, kind of get stuck in there. So you start to pull and stretch and um, it kind of beats the mold up. So it's uh, deteriorated a little bit. I don't use any mold release. Um, I haven't really needed to. I've noticed that when you take these out and they're still warm, it's easier to take them out. But the longer you let them sit in the mold, uh, the more they're going to stick. So I'll try and take these out while they're still warm. Um, so I, I think this this thing I'm going to retire. Uh, it was served its purpose. Um, so the casting resin I've been using is this stuff right here. Amazing casting resin. It's worked really good. It dries in about 10 to 15 minutes. So you take these two separate bottles, one to one ratio, pour it into your mold, and you should end up with this, which is a paintable surface. So after I have a few of these, uh, acrylic paint job. So here's one. Um, here's another one. It's a little bit of different paint job here. So one of the things I did notice when I had this, this mold um, with this particular piece right here, I had poured the resin in and this part of the mold was sitting on the surface. So once this was sitting on the surface, this has a little part of the nose that protrudes here. So the weight of the resin actually forced this part to go in a little bit. And what happened is it gave me a really flat indentation right here. Um, versus something like this one sticks out more so that was a bit of a problem um, so what I did is I used this this can and I took the mold and I put it in here first so I put it like this and then I poured the resin and uh, I got a much better result which was this one um, and the rest of these so these are all ready to paint and uh, Basically, you let this dry. I'll put this away. Um, I try and keep it covered just because I have a lot of creatures out here. Chickens and cats and things. So now I'm going to put a layer of gauze on these molds. So I'm going to cut it about the size that it needs to be. Um, I don't think I really need to cut it into smaller pieces. So I'll cut this on. I'll cut this off. each side okay, so this piece of gauze should cover this whole mold um, so I'm going to take some more mold builder lather it on slap it on so you can see this uh, this color of the mold right now it means it's pretty dry I haven't put any layers on this since yesterday, maybe at about 
seven or eight at night, so it's it's been quite a while. 13, 15 hours, something like that. Um, so I'll put on another layer of mold builder. At this point you can kind of put it on a little thicker. So I'm, I think I'm pretty close to the 15 layers. I'm just going to lay this on top and I'm going to start putting some more mold builder in the middle and kind of work my way out. So like I said, this gauze just really firms up the mold. Just going to make it last a little longer. I get a few more casts out of it. Okay, so just brush this on. Just brush this on. Putting it on pretty thick, just making sure it gets in there in between these little pukas. Cover it up really good. And I think after this gauze, I'm going to do maybe two more layers of mold builder and then I'm going to pull this this mold off and take my sculpture out and start casting and I'll show you the casting process. Okay, I think I have enough layers on this mold to pull this off. Or, um, if you feel it, this one's a little bit tacky but it's not wet so I know it's dry. So first thing I use is a uh, utility knife or an exacto knife and this, um, this is to just cut around and make sure I get a, a clean lip so um, if you have a straight edge, that'll work well. I have this piece of wood here that's pretty close, so I'm going to use this. Next thing I use is a uh, palette knife or painter's knife. Um, I like to use the metal ones. And this is to just kind of get under there and scrape underneath. So um, last thing you want to do is tear this mold. So just take your time. You can remove this excess stuff first. Uh, little pieces that don't come off. I don't like to rip them. You know, sometimes when you tear things, it'll tear further than you want it to. So, you know, this knife wasn't sharp enough, obviously. So let's come back in here and cut this some more. That sounded like a good cut. So this is your excess stuff. A lot of these edges out here um, are pretty thin anyway and this is because they didn't have you know the same amount of layers applied to them as the center parts like I said last thing you want to do is tear this thing so I'll peel it up as I just gently push this palette knife under there and remember I have uh, some kneaded erasers in here and once you get under the sculpt like you can see it's pretty pretty easy to get it up um, so I'll take all this eraser off, these eraser bits. I'll use this again. Um, seems pretty good. I can tell by the, the thickness here. Yeah, this is going to be good enough mold. And then I'm just going to start peeling around the edge all the way around the mold. Around the sculpt. Okay. Slowly peel it off. And there you go. So that's my marigold mold. I like the way that sounds, marigold mold. Cut that little excess off. Here's my sculpt, intact. Uh, I like to paint these things next, so I'll probably paint this. Okay, so let's pull the skeleton one off, or the death. So I have my theme here, life and death. is a big theme in my art. Uh, I was born on the Day of the Dead, so I really enjoy uh, using Day of the Dead imagery, um, skeletons and whatnot, uh, but also flowers and things that represent life because it was the day that I was born, so I get both angles. So this one came up pretty easy too. Um, so again, take this eraser off. Sometimes this eraser sticks, just grab some of the uh, extra bit of eraser you have and you'll stick to it, kind of give you some pulling power. Um, okay, so same thing, I'm just going to roll around. You can see little bits of this part of the mold are coming off. That's okay. I'm probably going to cut some of that edge off anyway just to clean it up. Um, 
so gently, gently, don't don't force anything out. Um, I know with this particular sculpt, the part of the nose right here, there's a big uh, undercut, this part. So that's going to be probably the, the hardest area when I'm pulling the, the casting out, the casts, after they dry. So here's my death mold, my skull. Um, looks funny now, but when you pull these these cast pieces, they will come out like your sculpt. Okay, so so basically that's it. This mold is ready to pour some uh, casting resin in. And I'll show you guys that next. Okay, now that my mold's done, um, I'm gonna pour a cast, and uh, I'll show you. So one of the things I like to use is this box I showed you before. Just make sure that the um, cast sets evenly. So I just put my mold right in there. Make sure it's straight. Okay. Again, this is the uh, this is the stuff I'm using. Amazing casting resin. So it's two parts. Okay. So you're gonna mix equal amount of these liquids in each cup. I uh, wear rubber gloves or. Uh, kind of latex gloves, you don't want to get this stuff on you. Um, so I'm going to pour this in. There's markers here on the, these little cups. So I found out for these molds, it's about halfway up. Okay, so that one's that one's good. I normally wear a respirator too. Can't, this stuff doesn't really smell too bad, but um, you know, I'm sure it's putting off fumes, and uh, I don't, I don't really want to get lung cancer or anything. Okay, so second part. Uh, these little cups come with the casting resin, and I like to uh, keep a paper towel handy, so when I'm done using them, I can clean them out, use them again. Nothing builds up. So one of the things you're going to need also is a glass jar. So uh, this is an old spaghetti jar. Something with a wider mouth usually works best. Um, so if you can find something a little shorter and a little wider, you're, you're probably going to get a. It's going to be a little easier to use. Okay, so I'm going to pour this in at the same time. Make sure they kind of mix together. Okay, right when these things get together they're going to start a chemical reaction and it's going to start drying. So I'm going to use something to stir this up with, stir it really good. And if you put your hands down here at the glass, the bottom of the glass jar, mix this up, make sure you scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. They say to mix it for about a minute until you don't see any swirls. Um, and, and to be honest, it mixes pretty quick. Um, you can feel down here though, like I was saying, and it'll start to get hot. The glass will actually start to get hot. Uh, this is a chemical reaction that's happening. It means a drying process is starting. Um, so it's a little warm now. I'm just going to mix it up. Just make sure you really mix it well. Don't look in the jar. You don't want to splash this stuff in your eyes. You keep your head away. Keep the lid away. Okay, so I can feel it's pretty hot in here. I'm going to slowly pour this in one end and I'm just gonna keep pouring it in the same spot and this stuff dries extremely fast I definitely wouldn't use a mold release because most every mold release I've ever seen on clear resin leaves a fog or a, a really a, you know foggy residue on the outside and um, if you're if you're trying to go for something that's really clear, like jewelry or something, uh, don't use any mold release. One of the things you can do is you can take that mold and put it in the freezer. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. This thing is still pretty warm, so I'm gonna slowly start peeling it around the edge, and I can feel it's it's pretty tight. Um, so just keep going around until you find a a side that will come out pretty easily. Don't force anything. And um, this this can take a little while actually. You know, like I said, I don't want to tear this mold. I want to get as many casts out of it as I can. And uh, 
each time you cast you're going to notice you're going to lose a little bit of the mold every time okay so if some areas feel like they're stuck just go to a different spot work it from a different direction um, so you can see right here some of the mold coming off in there um, not much you can do about that you, know, you want to pull out and away out and away okay so once you get that initial lip off and you want to kind of work into it just work it around work it around push your thumb inside that mold even further every time and you can get some big pieces out um, like I said you know you're gonna lose a little bit of the mold every single time it just just the way it is uh, parts will stretch but the first couple casts they're not too bad um, especially if you get them while it's still warm and this thing is still warm um, just kind of know where your cuts are and then, there you go so not too bad some of the edges are a little off yeah that's not great but for the most part pretty successful here's the original so uh, done in a silver Sculpey clay, and you can see this one, this white one. A yeah, little bit of mold there, but um, now we'll paint it. Well, I'm just going to use acrylic paint, Liquitex, one of my favorite paints here, uh, heavy body Liquitex. Uh, this this one's great. On the back, they give you a, a value scale, how light or dark the color is, um, the opacity, light fastness. So a lot of information on the back with this Liquitex heavy body. Also, I like the caps; they're easy to take off easy to put on I don't dry too hard versus something like these uh, these paints here this cap always gets stuck it's always pretty hard I think this is um, Galleria or Graham um, yeah so these caps much better Liquitex makes a really good paint um, so one of the things I'm just gonna paint this basic black and white I like to use ultramarine blue and burnt umber so I mix these two together and you get a really nice black. One of the great benefits of having, by uh, making your own black, is you can make your black cooler uh, by adding more ultramarine blue, or you can make it warmer by adding a little more burnt umber. And th this can really play with the uh, the depth of the black, so you, you really have a little more control. So um, they suggest to paint this thing while it's still warm. And I'm going to start with the black and try and get into all those really dark areas first. And I'm going to loosely just kind of apply this because you can always cover it up with the white so you don't have to be too meticulous or, or detailed right now um, I'm going to use a fair amount of water and uh, to really get this paint in those those areas um, they say right when you pull this cast out is when you're going to get the best adhesion so you want to paint it fairly quickly after you cast it and you can see I'm just kind of going for it This uh, underpainting is dry, and um, I'm going to add a little bit of a grayish white to the top, and I'm using a whiter brush. This is a filbert. You can use a flat, too. Um, and I don't want to really get into those cracks. I just want to kind of stay on the surface. So I try and use dry acrylic so I don't add too much water. The, with the underpainting, I did add a lot of water. But um, if you add too much water to this, it's going to seep into those those cracks, and you're going to get um, you know grayish white in there. And I really want the black to stand out in those areas. And there's a few areas that I'm going to add black back into around the eyes and things. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of white pure white and this is going to be for the things that are really sitting on the top here next one I do can be completely different colors so uh, getting some of the mold some of the paint jobs so really fun to make hope it works out for you guys good luck